Blood Catalytic Cracking, or FCC, is uh, the last step in the evolution of cat cracking processes. Also introduced in 1942, just like TCC, or thermophore cat cracking, during uh, the Second World War, in an effort to make uh, high-octane number gasoline. Uh, remember that high octane number uh, relates to high power as you can have higher compression ratios in the combustion engines. The FCC uh, really uh, shows an excellent integration of the cracking reactor, an endothermic reactor, with the catalyst regenerator, an exothermic reactor for uh, very high thermal efficiency. FCC is now used universally in, in all refineries throughout the world, has replaced all the previous cat cracking processes. Now in FCC, in the feed that is gas oil, uh, preheated to about 300 degrees Fahrenheit, is introduced into the reactor with steam the uh, riser part of the reactor where the hot catalyst particles as you see the green line coming from the uh, catalyst uh, regenerator are fluidized the particles are fluidized because they're smaller particles they are fluidized in uh, flowing gases and vapors so they have a huge surface area to meet the incoming feed temperatures that are close to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit so cracking reactions on these very fine particles that are fluidized and flowing with the reactants takes place in a very short space of time something uh, that could be measured uh, with seconds and the products are sent to a fractionator after going through a series of cyclones obviously to separate is small volatilized uh, particles of the catalyst. In the fractionators, the products, as usual, are separated into gas, gasoline, light cycle oil, heavy cycle oil, and finally the heaviest fractions, decant oil. Remember that LCO is used in the US for making diesel fuel through hydrocracking and hydrogenation. And decant oil could be used as fuel oil or as feedstock uh, for making carbon black or by coking to make needle coke for graphite uh, electrodes. Coming back to uh, the reactor, the cat uh, cracking reactor, the coked catalyst now, the end of the riser where this uh, cracking reaction takes place, are sent to the regenerator. It's now fully coked on the surface lost its uh, activity through the red uh, line is sent to uh, the regenerator where air is introduced to burn off the coke the temperatures in the regenerator could reach to 1300 to 1400 degrees fahrenheit should remember that the catalysts now are much improved as well they may include zeolites that would take high temperatures uh, and, and very controlled reactivities through pore size distribution and so forth. So the products, uh, combustion products or flue gases from this uh, catalyst regenerator could be sent to a CO boiler because the gas may contain significant amount of carbon monoxide which could be burned to a CO2 to uh, provide additional heat or to generate additional heat. So the catalysts that are now regenerated are sent to the reactor to close the catalyst uh, cycle through that green line, as you see, to meet the incoming feed. So our catalyst cycle is pretty much uh, complete at this point. But note this excellent integration, thermal integration of uh, the catalyst regeneration, the exothermic process with uh, the cracking reactions where the catalysts that are heated uh, in the regenerator are uh, sent in a very effective uh, manner to the reactor without much heat loss so that is uh, the ultimate if you will thermal efficiency of a process uh, 
and that's why FCC is now the universally accepted catalytic cracking process.